today from Orchard Park, New York. It's week 17 of the NFL on EA Sports. see Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. We are about 15 miles south of downtown Buffalo at Bills Stadium in Orchard Park. The folks in Buffalo love their Bills and a moment ago they entered to the delight of this sold out crowd. They're set for football as their Bills will do battle with the Miami Dolphins. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama at the helm. I know you saw in your email that the ballots will be coming in after this week's games for league MVP. You've got a vote, I've got a vote. We're getting ready to see a closing argument in this one, though. Can he lock it down? Week 17, the last act. We're not supposed to say who we're voting for, but I can say this. He's in the stadium right now. <laughs> so there you go. There's my hint. There, there's your hint right there. I'm going to wait until after this one is over. He's got to sway me with one more performance. They'll run for the first time with Raheem Mostert. And he'll get about three as he takes his up near the 25. The ball carrier. The numbers for him from a week ago. Charles, how do you think he ran the football? I thought he definitely had his moments. I did think that they could have utilized him a little bit better, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him to see how they're going to use him this week. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. Trying to turn the corner, but they string him out and stop him at the line of scrimmage. He was no gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. No gain on the play. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. They tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. He only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Now it's Crowder. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Out comes the offense for the Bills, led by their quarterback at six foot five. That's Josh Allen. And I'll bet right now it's just one thought in his mind. Win, win the game. game. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. He played pretty well. I mean, he didn't turn over the ball in terms of interceptions. No, two right? touchdown passes two last touchdown week. Two touchdown passes, but when your team doesn't win, that's just hollow. And the best quarterbacks don't care about anything but whether or not their team won. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. 
Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Evans pass. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. And in Week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Here's Hill on the return. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it to each other, supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title is clinched, you shouldn't take the foot off the gap. No, not at all. Play it all the way through. I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. They'll run the draw with Mostert. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. For a lot of people, the MVP award means a quarterback award usually, but over 100 yards again last week. And they're going to have to look his way more than once when giving out this award this season, I think. Yeah, it's not just the consistency. It's been some plays that we've seen where we talk about it for weeks thereafter. That's what we're getting out of him over 100 yards last week. It's supposed to continue that in this game, too. It's a gain of three, and it gets him to first. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. So first and ten now from the 30. They'll run the toss to Mostert. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Tug of Ilo on the throw on second down here. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. He probably feels like he cannot get a break. He was sacked seven times last week. And here we go again in the first quarter. And we always talk about the internal clock of a quarterback in the pocket and how he has to have a real keen sense of it in order to get rid of the football. After being sacked seven times last week, that clock has been sped up. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. And he finds a man on the crossing round. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. And Oliver. 
picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. That's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down, then a near sack. They got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit. Maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback. Because that was awfully close. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. The Bills take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard So line. here come the Bills out for their second drive, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked Go to somewhere else. Well. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. The numbers for Diggs from a week ago, seven catches, 88 yards. And that was a nice job there pulling that one in. Now, this is an offense that will certainly spread the ball around a bit, and this is a guy that defenses had better focus on. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And it's incomplete. Allen's pass incomplete on the throwaway. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for this with Singletary. And it would appear he's going to be short of a first down as he stopped right around the 29. Now a stoppage here as we've got a bill shaken up on the play. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. A beautiful fake. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. Take over first and ten. And here now the offense heading back out there. And it's all come down to this, hasn't it? Final week of the regular season. As this year's playoffs play out anything like the regular season has gone, could be in for a wild and fun month of January. And we can break the rules because we can look ahead. All right, there's not a coach out there that's ever said to their team, all right, let's look three, three weeks down the road. It's always right here, right now. Forget that. Think about what the playoffs are going to look like. The teams that we see that are already in, the teams that are trying to get in, we could have some great matchups. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Here's Moster, and he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. The ball carrier. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Intended for Durham Smythe. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that'll move the ball downfield. 
Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for Miami. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. So possession goes over here on the punt. First and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? They'll contain him to just four, second down. At the 24-yard line. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen finding Knox there, complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over to the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Allen going to give it to Moss. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play, first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield where they're blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Field. Here's Allen. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Trey Flowers, the former Arkansas Razorback, in there to get him. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Allen, it's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and 12. From the gun, it's Allen. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they will get this across midfield, but still well short of the first as he's dropped at the 46. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. No score after one on EA Sports. No score. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. 
A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's third. Two are going to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39. And obviously that's well short of the first. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it. And he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. The Bills take so a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bills will be backed up to start the drive. They'll have it. First and ten. Buffalo's set to get the football back here. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score. Second quarter as they come up on first and ten. Singletary to get the drive started. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The ball carrier. It's Melvin Ingram on the tackle. And what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. The Bills on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 11. He releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. This offense has definitely been slow getting out of the gate. It's almost like they missed their wake-up call for this one. No points on their first two possessions, and now it's looking like none on this one either. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Thirty-nine yard punt, six yards on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach 
Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? We'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. At the 45 yard line. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they seem they can move a lot of scrimmage. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a gain of 10. First down, Miami. This is Mostert. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. So now factoring in the face mask, here's first and 10. On the handoff, this is Mostert. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Tua wants to throw it on second down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. And a throw there going to be incomplete. And what with the dive look that time on defense? Just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Sanders' kick is good. And the Dolphins will jump out to a 3 nothing lead. 3 Bills nothing. Been a bit of a dogfight thus far into the second quarter now, and we do have our first points, a field goal. Yeah, a lot of people say, wow, first action on the scoreboard, about time to me. The action's been right there on the field, trying to figure out who could gain an advantage, gain some field position, finally get points on the board. I'm loving this kind of game. <laughs> and feels like kickers might play a big role in this one. Yes, make sure you give them the respect they deserve. They could cost you a game or win you one. The Buffalo offense and Devin Singletary heading back out there. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring other people touching him for a while. And then you get a chance to come back to him when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Now Allen. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Allen's throw is complete. 20! And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Jameson Crowder with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Bills have taken the lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits on there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Extra point attempt to follow here. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Scoring summary. The three-play drive. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown.
touchdown pass to kick it away. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so breaking it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Well, comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time able to get three. Is that what they wanted? They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And they will finally run him down, but not until he brings this one all the way back down inside the 10-yard line. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. And at week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. So after the INT, it's Allen. Allen hit, he lost the football. And fortunately, the Bills jump on it and get it back. Able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. Very fortunate to get another shot. Here's second and goal. Allen. And he's going to go down again. Raekwon Davis able to record his fifth sack of the season. That's three sacks now. That's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team... They lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Now from way back there after the sack, it's third and goal, a long third and goal. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Makes the score Bills 10, Dolphins 3. moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's throwing one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Now Tua. They're going deep for Hill. 
And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to put it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here comes Josh Allen and the Bills offense back onto the field. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well. But the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The left side caught by Diggs. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. To throw again on second down. Allen, he's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. So third and well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. But it does get away in second down. To throw again. Allen. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. The intended target there was Gabriel Davis. And it's third down. Again, they'll throw with Allen. They'll get this one complete to Davis. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. A 30-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. Yeah. 
So we have come upon halftime here in week 17. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you as always. Welcome into our final regular season edition of our Halftime Report. Playoff lives hanging in the balance as we take you around the NFL one final time. We'll start with an AFC East matchup. The New York Jets taking on New England in Foxborough. And it's the Jets who have the lead in the second quarter. Corey Davis with three touchdown receptions. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they trail in that ball game to the visiting Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill looking good. Two touchdown passes. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Saints in that one. Two touchdown passes there for Jameis Winston. In the game you're watching, it was Josh Allen who was on target in that first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Jason Sanders to kick off for Miami. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. Taken about seven yards deep. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. We'll see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. Second and one. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Allen now looks to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. Singletary here running out of the gun. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Brandon Jones. No gain on the play. Second and 10 at the 43-yard line. Throwing on second down. Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Allen took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Xavier Howard on the coverage. Throwing his Allen on third. And this time he's got the hook up. It's complete. And he is going to have the Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. 
But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. If points result, we'll call this play significant. On first down, Singletary. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. That credit to tackle to Brandon Jones. No gain on the play. Brings up second and ten. Looking to throw on second down. Allen. He finds his man. That's Sweeney. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Five yards. Now it's third and five. But he made that catch knowing full well that at the end of it, he's going to catch a pretty good lick. I guess if there's anyone on this team that can absorb a pop, it's him. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Operating from the gun, Allen. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. And this is too far behind his man. He missed him. It's incomplete. The kick by Bass is good. And the lead stretches. 16 to 3 now. Bills 16. Dolphins 3. So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Over first and ten at their own 26 yards. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Back to the air on second down. Tongue of Iloa. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 39 yards the distance covered on the catch and run. Still all sorts of time left in this game, and you'd like to be able to say take it one play at a time. But the truth is they're probably going to have to hit on a few big plays in the passing game to close this gap, and that's a good start right there. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Here's Tua. On the screen, this is Edmonds. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. In that play, they wound up losing yardage. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Two and a throw again. They're able to locate Wilson. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And that is 
is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Tua to try again on second down. That'll be caught for a Dolphin touchdown. It's Williams. Preston Williams, his second touchdown on the season. And the Dolphins have got it back to a one-score game. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... You throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. And it's up. This is good, and it makes it a 16-10 game now. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Jason Sanders to kick off for Miami. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Josh Allen leads the offense out for their next possession. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. That's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second and 12, Allen. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Byron Jones on the coverage. From the gun, Allen. And he comes back with one complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Allen looks to throw on third and one. And he will find Davis, that's complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 85 catches for him on the year now, and the result there is a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. They'll run on first down. 
Singletary. And he sidestepped one man, but reinforcements come to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Third quarter action here in this regular season finale. This will be second and 10. The 41 yard. Allen going to throw. And his throw is incomplete. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Throwing on first down is Allen. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Sweeney. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. We get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now Allen off the bootleg. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now Allen again. This one caught by Davis. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And five at the 11 yard line. And again, it's Allen. That's complete right around the eight. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line. Jamison Crowder. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Brings up third and two. Allen to throw once more. This will be caught at about the five. And the Bears are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. The gain of five that time gives them the conversion and makes it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. They'll look to run with Singletary. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. The three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. Back now in Buffalo. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bills will add on to their lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. They find themselves open for an easy touchdown. the huddle and his guys are going for two here and they'll try to run it in with Singletary and he's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage the defense left him with nowhere to go and the try for two is denied defense 
defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. To the touchdown pass to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own. And out come the Dolphins now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On first down, Tunga Bailoa. They'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. Tunga Bailoa. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll make this a second down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Intended for Cedric Wilson. Incomplete. For Davius White on the Dolphins on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and five. This time he's got the hookup. It's complete. He's at the 30, 10, and all the way in for a Miami touchdown. A big play there with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Dolphins able to get this back within a touchdown. So that's a really big play here in the fourth quarter. And don't look now. They're right back in this game. Did it feel to you as it did to me? that maybe they were a little bit soft in what they were lining up with on defense. Jason Almost like they were protecting the lead point. rather than trying to make a play. And now that lead is down to just one score. And this is back to a five-point game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Jason Sanders to kick off for Miami. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Takes this about five yards deep. And yeah, this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Out come the Bills as we take a look at the playoff race in the AFC. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side. And now you know, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead. They go into coast mode. And all of a sudden, they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here. Otherwise, they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. A gain of three, second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven at the 28-yard line. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Jamison Crowder there. And it's third down. Byron Jones on the coverage. From the gun, it's Allen. And a big loss here as he's taken down. A big loss on the play. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Matt Hawk now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Watch out for Hill on the return. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now here.
here come the Dolphins. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. He'll look to throw right away. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. No gain on the screen there at second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. It was Teron Johnson that time who had that play covered from the start. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. At their own 20-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right of the yard. Xavier Howard on the tackle. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Singletary again, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Singletary. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it, or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Here's Allen on first and ten. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Allen's pass. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They like going to him in the slot, he catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well, great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. First as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash too. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They'll contain him to just four, second down. A gain of four. It's now second and six at the 33-yard line. To throw, it's Allen. A quick throw, going to be caught by Diggs. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 20-yard line. Allen to Diggs there for Buffalo first. 20-yard line. Operating from the red zone now. Allen, his throw caught at about the five. And the Bills are going to have a first and goal as the 
tackle is made at about the five. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Again, they'll throw with Allen. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Five-yard touchdown. And the Bills will extend their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. now for the point after. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Touchdown pass to kick it away. And a fair catch signal for and take it successfully. The Dolphins take over at first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off play action, he'll throw to start the drive. Dancing to his left. Now he'll pull it down. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. From the gun, it's Tua. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. What a difference a week makes. Last week, he hit on over 80% of his passes. This week, he's down under 50%. What do you see as the difference? Well, I think we're used to seeing a drop. If someone's over 80%, they're not going to hold that number, not in this league. But a drop under 50%, that just tells me that the defense has spent a lot of extra time on game films and came up with a really good plan to try and chip away at his timing. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. Tua setting up shop to throw again. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. The second down attempt there knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand and it's incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. And again, it's Tunga Bailoa. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Micah Hyde comes flying in from safety for the sack. 
and it's fourth down. I can hear you. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. We welcome you back in. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now they go for it on fourth down, but that pass is knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bills are going to take over in excellent field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, yeah, exactly right. They'll run on first down with Moss. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Delay of game. Offense. That's going to set them back five yards. On second down, Singletary. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, there has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it on line, but it comes up about a rotation short. So Tua and the Dolphins down by 12, a little under a minute to go. And their four-game winning streak in great danger. All things considered, a pretty good kick, just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. And the Dolphin first down. Here's Tungabailoa on first and 10. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away and it's second down. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. To a hit, and the ball is out. Miller. To a Tug of Iloa sack. And Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, Boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get home after a win like that. So for Buffalo, they will indeed finish over 500 at 9-7. and seven. And that is maybe not exactly what they were hoping for, but a better-than-average season nonetheless. Meanwhile, for the Dolphins, this was basically just an exhibition game for them as they'd already clinched home field advantage. And the playoffs will run through their house as they'll get the week off and get set to host a divisional round game in two weeks' time.
I'm Brandon Gunn. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.